Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for being here. I wanted to continue our conversation about how to create this presence, this elusive presence, and what that presence actually means, and how do we create it, cultivate it, and what are the practices that we should be doing to achieve this. Presence is your complete spiritual awareness. It's your spiritual identity. It's you standing completely in your will and your power and volition. And at no moment capitulating it or letting it go at half mask for any reason whatsoever. It is the I, the chooser, not the ego, not the ego, but the actual complete spiritual presence in all dimensions of time and space. Because the ego is nothing more than a, the analogy would be like a, a quark floating in the ocean. I'm talking about something much bigger, much deeper, that has to do with a kind of um, awareness that is connected between being in complete surrender to your higher power, so therefore your ego death. So it's not the ego. It's not your will and your volition and you being a dictator to everyone else and being a ruler and trying to dominate. It's the opposite. It's a different kind of ruler where you surrender into a higher version of yourself. The best way I can describe this is if you were to see a flock uh, of uh, stalling that are in uh, murmuration where they are flying all together at dusk and there are millions of them that are in sync, that are doing all these incredible things in the sky and form in formations that are not rehearsed and are completely spontaneous. They have surrendered themselves individually to a higher power, to something that's much greater than them and they are now in sync and aligned perfectly with each other. And they are so in sync <clears throat> that a greater morphogenic awareness is taking over and none of them, none of the flying starling birds will ever fall from the sky. The geometry will land when it lands and lift when it lifts. And it, it's, it's this morphogenic thing that allows them to flow and move through magnetic resonance. So the presence is that big identity, that gigantic identity that allow these millions of birds. <clears throat> Sometimes they have huge murmuration where there are two to three millions of them that are flying in these incredible configurations. And it looks like magic. And the sound that they create is incredible. I've seen videos, I've never seen it live, but I've seen video, heard video, videos and you can hear the sound that they make when they go overhead. Uh, uh, and they're all flying like in, in, in that kind of proximity to each other. And they, they just are creating this incredible, uh, um, um, almost like lava lamp fluidic kind of shape. So that's a physical or, or natural um, uh, representation of a higher awareness taking over a group body. So the presence I'm talking about is you surrendering to that higher identity. So it's connected to letting go, but it's also connected to taking action. Because although the birds are letting go, the starling are again letting go to that higher identity to guide them, but they are flying. And they may seem to fly blindly, but they are not flying blindly. They're letting the proximity and the, the higher consciousness that's, that's guiding them take them through. There are flocks of uh, tunas and, and other kind of, uh, of sea life who do actually the same thing as well, where they begin to swim in a, in a, in a, in a swarm, almost like a vortex, a torsion field, and they're creating all these incredible shapes. Again, there's a higher consciousness that's taking them over. And, and they, don't, they don't hit each other, they just go in perfect harmony, harmonizing with each other. So 
that presence is what we are trying to create, what we're trying to achieve. And it takes a while to get in that state where you're in that edge of surrender and also taking action of some kind to manifest, uh, to allow this presence to uh, guide you uh, into some sort of higher version of yourself. So um, uh, I know it's, it's not, um, and, and again, it requires quite a bit of training because naturally speaking, the ego, which is a singularity of expression and awareness, it's us being a singularity. Whereas when you're in this morphogenic awareness, you let the consciousness of the collective, the plural, plural, plurality take over as your identity. It's a shift of awareness from being a singularity to being a, a plurality, where you let the plurality takes over and then when it takes over, you allow it to control. And then you act accordingly. So this is what we're, we're trying to achieve ultimately. That in order for us to be able to demonstrate the true power of the quantum field, and I'm, when I'm talking about the morphogenic awareness, I'm talking about the awareness that exists, the presence, the God's presence that exists in infinity times infinity. And if that presence exists everywhere and there's no place that it doesn't exist, then you let it take over. There is no miracle that's impossible. There's no mountains that cannot be, un that cannot be leveled. There's nothing that it cannot do because all of the laws of nature obey that consciousness because that consciousness created all of them by decree and by command. So that's what I'm trying to get you to understand that, that in a certain kind of practice that helps elevate the connection to that presence that allows to cultivate what the uh, uh, Tibetan Buddhists call natural light, which is the presence of you being self-aware even when you exist in the pr pr uh, plurality, okay? When you're in the pr plurality, you, 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 there's an awareness that remains. It's not the same as the ego singularity consciousness. It's very different, but you become, you practice it enough that you become so aware that when you go into the transition from singularity into collective awareness or plurality, you, you still achieve um, um, an awareness of, 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 yourself, of yourself being multiplicity, not just a singularity, but that everything and everyone is you. Now for that to occur, for that kind of like connection and from that kind of awareness to occur, you have to, um, you have to be in a very specific state of, there, there are several things that can happen. It can happen through prayers. And most of all, as I was describing, all of it involves one thing. It's a surrender of your ego, your attachment, your control, and letting go of everything that is connected to this and then giving it over to God, to a higher consciousness and let God take over giving everything over to God and say to God, I cannot control this. I'm not capable of doing this. I'm giving this all over to you. And I'm asking you for your help. And then you let go. Okay. Now, it can occur temporarily. In other words, at moment, let's say I'm doing this prayer right now and I'm letting go and I'm surrendering and I'm seeing God take over. I can't control all of this. I'm so scared and I'm, I'm, what's happening around me is too terrifying, particularly given the fact that we're living to all these climate change and all of this chaos that's happening around us, political, social, and, and uh, disease-oriented kind of like uh, uh, phenomena. So if you can let go of all of this and say to yourself, I'm giving it over to a higher consciousness and I'm gonna let this higher consciousness take control. 
and I don't know how to control this. I'm too small for this. And you let that higher collective awareness be in control. And whatever, wherever the murmuration of this higher consciousness wants to take you, you let it guide you. You're like the stalling and you let it guide you wherever it wants to take you. You don't have any preconceived notion where it's gonna land. You don't know how it's gonna happen. You have no idea. You just let that higher consciousness take over. And as it takes over, it guides you, it guides you all of a sudden. You land somewhere in the most miraculous and impossible way, miracle happen. The most unexpected and miraculous thing manifests and your prayers, the concern that you surrendered have been solved. Okay? So this is the way, this is the path that leads you into a miraculous existence. Now, of course, what I described, the, 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 the letting go of attachment, fears, and control, the release and the surrender takes a while to achieve. Sometimes days, sometimes months, sometimes weeks. You know, some people may achieve them at the moment and achieve them very quickly, but for the most part, people, it takes a long time for people to get to this. Okay? Because a lot of time, let's see if somebody's trying to get in the call. Somebody just texts me. Because sometimes people forget the link. Give me a moment. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so sometimes um, uh, what goes on is that um, um, as you as all of this is going on and there is all of this, you know, the, the, you, you need to surrender. So you you need to work out to the bottom of the attachment because sometimes the attachment we have vested interest in being angry, we have. We're trying to solve the problem by our own means, not consciously, but unconsciously. And we are having silent conversation with the players that are in the picture. Let's say you have somebody that you're angry at for whatever reason, rightly or un 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 unreasonably. And in your head, you're having conversation with them and you are accusing them of being that or the other. You, you haven't let go. As long as the conversation is going silently in your head, every time you hear of them, you see of them, you feel something tugging at you. You haven't surrendered. You still attach. You need to get to a point where you comp when you think of them, you're blank. When you think of what they did to you, however you felt victimized, however you felt about them, when you think of them, you're, you're completely undisconnected to your to to their, the the sound of their name, their voice, or their actions, and when you get into that point, you have surrendered it, and when you completely let it go like this and surrender it completely into the blessed field, at that point, the solution set will come back to you. But till you get to that point, you haven't let go. You're still attached. You may say verbally that you're letting go. And indeed you're trying very hard because to get to that point is, is very powerful because when someone is victimizing you and continue to victimize you, you, you feel you're in the right to be upset, to be angry and, and to have rights. And it takes a minute for you to get to a point where the mention of their name and the mention of them and whatever is, is completely irrelevant to you. And it sounds weird, particularly when you're living with somebody and they are, they are doing things to you to get to a point where you don't care. And, and, and by the way, when you really don't care about somebody that's in your life, let's say you're in, you're, you're, you're in a, personal, um, a personal relationship with somebody, when, when they really see that you really don't care about them, or you what they thought they had on you as, let's say, they, they were holding on you certain kind of object or they were expecting you to react in a certain way and they realize you don't care anymore and you don't give a damn about things, object, physical things, and you don't care about them, you just want them out. When they realize this, 
this is when they really get scared because they know you're not dancing anymore. There is complete disconnection. And that state of surrender, when you get into it, you enter because you have let go of everything related to them. You are now part of the greater, the, the, plural, the plurality, and you're part of this morphogenic field, the murmuration of the starling, and you're flying blindly, not blindly, guided by the higher consciousness, but not guided by your ego and your attachments. Because there is always a greater lesson in the karma that connects you to the person, and there's a lesson that you need to learn from them. And the moment you let go and you surrender and you let the bigger lesson come for you, then all of a sudden, there's a miraculous solution set that shows up. Remember this. Now, having done all of this, you can easily enter into alignment to the morphogenic field. And temporarily, you can remain in this with the situation for a while. But if at some later point, a week, two weeks later, you go back to the resentment, to the anger, to the rage, to the emotions that keeps you attached to these things, you come back again to a singularity. So to practice this idea of presence, in other words, to exist in that plurality uh, as often as possible, takes a while. And prayers, self-evaluation and self-introspection can help you. Cultivating the virtues, as I taught you before in months and months ago, last year, cultivating the virtues, behind the, the, the 12 iron virtues can actually help you connect and, and realize when you're being petty and when you're being small, and when you're being reactive, because we're all human, when we feel somebody does something to us, we become reactive. And when you become all of these things, you, and if you're, being, if you're constantly self-evaluating, you're gonna get to a point where you're gonna realize, okay, I'm, I'm being petty, I'm being small, I need to move on. I need to let go of this and I need to move on, right? And, and that self-evaluation or contemplation, as I like to call it, is part of the practice, comes from, before the contemplation come a meditation practice. When I feel, for example, if I have an attachment and I feel I'm connected and I'm, I'm feeling small about, I'm overwhelmed by whatever. And by the way, particularly now, because Mars is in retrograde, okay? And when Mars in retrograde, the, the, the planet is closest to the planet. So it not only unravel battle and war and, 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 and kind of like confrontational relationship, but it highlights them. It brings the things from the past present, and it also allows you a way to resolve them. So Mars is in retrograde right this moment. So you will see in your life that these things are gonna come back, the, the old will come back, and it's an opportunity for you to resolve and to resolve them once and for all. So it's important as you're going through this that you acknowledge the emotions. So when you think about certain situation, you may feel depressed, you may feel angry, you may feel whatever, if you can acknowledge this and then take very deep breath, because if you know that the planets are influencing you to, to actually inflict the emotions at this moment, then you don't take it personally because everyone in the planet, one way or another, are feeling exactly the same way, right? And because of this, you kind of like, okay, everyone is going through this now, let me manage the issue that I'm having right now. So pranayama breath, deep breath, universal breath. Breathe from the core of the earth, move it through your bottom of your feet, your entire body. That feeling, if it's resentment you're feeling, attachment, a conversation you're having in your head silently when the person is not there, when it's all about the situation, feeling victimized about what's going on. Take the, all of that, whatever it is, and as you exhale, 
outside of your head and your body, release it into source. Let it go. Let it go. It doesn't belong. That kind of poison doesn't belong in your body. Then breathe from source. Breathe from infinity times infinity because when you surrender it, it goes into source. And then breathe it back into source and let it drop into your body and let the goodness and the benevolence that you're feeling when you're in source, when you're in the retention of the breath, come back into your body and ground into the core of the earth. Repeat this 12 times in a row. And way before you get to the 12th time, you're gonna feel completely released. And as you feel released now, You've, you've, you, because of the deep breath, you enter now into a meditation state that could transform into a contemplation. And the contemplation will give you, because when you're contemplating, you, you don't have your eyes closed. You're not, you're not continuing the breathing process because you could continue to breathe more than 12 times. And that will maybe a half hour, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. And as you do this, it will take you into a meditation practice. But if you have something to do and you begin to walk or you begin to do other things, you know, et cetera, but your, your mind is still expanded and you're now thinking with a higher awareness of the plurality of the deeper and more profound lesson that this feeling this uncomfortable feeling is trying to teach you. What is the lesson that it's trying to teach me? And then as you move through it, you begin to realize, okay, there is a weakness in my spiritual psychology, in my personality. I tend to be X, Y, Z, and I have to alter this, address this. I have to become this way. From now on, I made a vow to myself that if a situation like this were to present itself, that's what I would do. And then you move on to become whatever that, 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 that next evolved uh, reaction is, that higher virtue is. And as you keep doing this, during contemplation like this, you're gonna create more presence because you're gonna allow the awareness that exists in the plurality to become default rather than you reacting from ego alone and fear or taking everything personally, you're gonna react now from the point of vast universal consciousness, the entire morphogenic field and understanding the greater lesson that it has to teach you and letting go of all of the personal and petty reactive things that are connected to the situation that you're facing. <clears throat> so prayer, you can pray. Ask God if for whatever reason, the reactive part is not detaching from you and you're still feeling victimized and you're still hurt. You can ask higher powers for mercy to intercede in your on your situation, if you feel completely overwhelmed and nailed to the wall by the, your situation, you ask for prayer because prayer really helps. Uh, and the higher forces will come in and begin to lift, help lift the burden away from you and give you clarity or a doorway through which light can, can vanquish the darkness. So you can do, and that practice of prayer can actually help bring more presence. So you can pray, you can meditate, you can contemplate, or you can recite mantras or affirmations. But mantras are um, from sacred languages, and they are able to actually help uh, lift, actually they are divine in, in, in frequency and vibration, the sounds, and they will allow um, they are like spiritual DNA codes. And when you recite them, they will give you more and more and more presence because you will, you, you, they will not only alter you, but they will alter your DNA. And you will begin to have more and more an awareness of yourself 
as a cosmic being, the morphogenic, the entire morphogenic field. Not just you as the simple little starling, but all three million starling being in a unified dance, guided by the collective and morphogenic awareness. That's what we're aiming for. The connection that to when I when when I'm holding this pair of glasses here, that pair, those pair of glasses exist everywhere in the universe simultaneously. And it's the awareness of all of them instead of seeing it as a singularity, because my consciousness is choosing to hold presence in only one point. That's why I'm seeing it in one point. But in fact, the, glass, the pair of glasses exist everywhere in the universe simultaneously. Any questions or any comments? I can tell you the other way to, to cultivate presence, which is what I suggested for you to do last week, was to have a better dream practice. Because we spend typically eight hours or more in you know, sleeping at night. And because we do this, instead of sleeping like animal when we pass out unconsciously and we wake up, we, every human being, has at least three to four dreams per night, at a minimum, sometimes even more. And because we do, we, the rapid eye movement, which is the REM sleep, where your eyes begin to flicker, it's when your brain pattern goes deeper. And at that moment, you begin to travel to other worlds. Let me explain. In Carlos Castaneda's teaching, as per Don Juan, his teacher, Every human being has in them what they call the assemblage or assembly point. They use both terms, which is a point that's between the shoulder blades, the upper shoulder blades, uh, or what we in our language call, uh, we go to when we do the heart and mind coherence, when you drop your head in the middle of your chest, okay? That awareness, that presence, we're seeing it from the front, they are seeing it from the back. 3D consciousness, according to them, is nothing more than a collective agreement by all human beings in the planet to hold their focus into only one location on the assembly point, which means that we all agree that the glasses are gonna be in my hand right here unconsciously, where in fact, if our focus was allowing the consciousness or awareness to travel anywhere in this bowl of light, which is in that part of our body, to travel anywhere, we would realize, we would be in, in a plurality consciousness and we would realize that the pair of glasses is everywhere in the universe at the same time. Do you see what I'm saying? So I want to make you aware of this, and I want you to have that kind of awareness to allow you to um, uh, 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 understand the connection to dreams. So if during a normal 3D conscious, conscious awareness, that ball of light is in agreement by all human beings to create fixed singular position for everything, so that we can have a very specific collective awareness. The opposite happened when we dream. When we go to sleep and we start dreaming, the agreement of the fixed location begins to loosen. And at that point, our consciousness begins to shift and travel 
in other location on the assembly, the assembly point. And when that happens, we go to other worlds. We begin to travel. And we go to other realities and other dimensions, and we have different awareness. Now, dreams. Now, it, dreams can can bring information from different level. It can bring information about things that happened during the day that we didn't pay attention to. You know, mundane things that details we didn't see. They can bring awareness to subconscious content, feelings, emotions. Uh, archetypes, fragments of ourselves, traumas, uh, dramas that we that are unresolved. And thirdly, they can be, be psychic, intuitive, uh, um, and for, foretelling of things that are to come, or connected to angelic or spiritual world. Now, the whole thing about dream practice and dream work is. The fact that during the dream, we are no longer in 3D consciousness. And you want to practice your entry into that dream world consciously. That's the first challenge and the first gate of true dream practice is to fall asleep while still being awake. It's a strange thing to say. But incrementally, and the, and the first thing really you need to do, and this is a big goal, it takes a long time to get to it, but the first thing you need to do is to start to write your dreams down. And as I spoke about last week, they, um, I gave you multiple techniques on how to do this. Uh, first, the, one of them is that your dreams are positional, because when you're dreaming, as, your, as the assembly point, your lo uh, location begins to change, there's a chemistry, there's a brain chemistry thing that doesn't happen. The chemical that keeps you awake begins to lower down and the chemical that allows you to go to sleep begins to go up. And it's a liquid thing in your brain. And when it goes high up, you begin to dream rapid eye movement. And if you're sleeping this way, when it paralyzes you because it doesn't want you to have sleep disorder to get up from the dream, because to you, when you're dreaming, everything is real. So if you're running, if you, if you were not paralyzed, you would be running, you would get up and run. I have a grandmother, my, great, my grandmother, when she was alive, uh, when she was engaged in battle in her dream, she would get up and start talking. She would literally wake up from the dream, standing in front of the bed. Uh, so that was her way of waking herself up. She, she didn't just wake up like in the bed and uh, that kind of thing. She would, she would be standing. Multiple times we were like, we saw her yelling and standing and, and, the, and she would wake up from the dream, but she would be standing in front of the bed. So that's a slight sleep dysfunction because in normal sleep, you're paralyzed. And the way you're paralyzed is that you, you, if you're in that position and you, your head is here, when you wake up, the tendency, because you were paralyzed for 45 minutes to an hour because the dream was that long, the tendency is to immediately turn. And the moment you turn, you're going to lose the dream. Because the, 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 liquid, the liquid balance in your brain shifts. And when it shifts, you're going to lose a dream. So if you want to remember, you go back to the original position and you say, what is it? You stay quietly and you say, what was it that I just dreamt? And when you return back and you ask that question, the dream will reconstruct going backward. One at a time, one at a time, one image at a time. And it will reconstruct like a movie wheeled going backward. And then you can re-enter the dream again and re-experience it. Now with this kind of dream practice, and if you do it, and, and the other thing I've said to you, this is key, this is key. You have to have a dream book next to you. Okay, some book, a book with a pen inside of it next to you. Like, like this other dream diary that I have, where you put all of your dreams in, and and you have a, a, a pencil inside of it. The page is open, a pencil inside of it, and then you so you just have to do a small intentional prayer before you go to sleep. Dream mine, I beseech you, I beg you, help me remember my dreams. Right before you go to sleep. 
put the broom, the book on your nightstand and turn, pull, pull the covers over your head and pray and go to sleep. You're gonna remember your dreams. Now I, I started do, redoing this again um, uh, as recently as a few days ago. And I can tell you in one night, five dreams. Now I've done the practice before. I'm way more advanced than all of you. But I had them back to back, five of them in a row. So I had that night, five rapid eye movement. And I wake up, I woke up completely. What's the best way to describe this? The dreams were still with me. And they were they imprinted in my entire day. The best way to where I'm describing my imprint. If the dream world is a page in a in a book where you write with, let's say, with red ink, and the daily life is on the next page where you went, you have black ink. The bleed through I'm describing is the red ink, the dream world imprint when you close the page on our bleeding into the 3D world, into the black ink. The, the, the feelings, the sensation and the presence that exists in the dream is with you in 3D. Okay. And that bleed through, that practice of bleed through, it may seem unimportant initially, but it actually is key to you providing, creating miracle in your life and you also creating miracle in other people's life. If you remember several weeks ago, we talk about that scene in uh, The Lord of the Rings, where again, Gandalf, some of you remember, I showed you a video of that footage uh, where Gandalf, was on the bridge of Casadun facing the bell rock, the steaming from the ancient world. All the, uh, uh, the, the, the people uh, that he was with, his companion, crossed the bridge and he was the last one. And then at the last moment, he faced the demon and he said, you cannot pass. And the, the, the demon was huge, put horn and fire, with a whip and the demon kept on coming toward him screaming. He said, you cannot pass. I'm the servant of the light. Uh, flame of the uh, uh, do will avail you. And then the, the, guy, the monster cracked the whip toward him and there was a bubble of light around him. And then when the monster tried to attack again, that demon from the ancient world, he took his staff and he struck it down and he said, you shall not pass. And he struck it down. I described this in the whole video at length to tell you that that staff is his entire Antakarana. It's, it's, it's his chakra system all the way back to God, externalized in all dimension, externalized. When he said, you shall not pass, he's calling upon the entire morphogenic awareness to bleed into his reality with the intention that he's decreeing. This is why dream practice becomes important for the next phase of our growth and evolution as the planet is changing rapidly. I have to evolve you. I have to say things that are deeper and higher. I'm, I, I can't apologize for this because I have to go higher. Things are, are falling apart. We need to become Gandalf and begin to create this miracle so that we can guide humanity to go to the right place. The bleed through becomes important because it's a practice in how to hold your consciousness into those two realities and to bring the dream reality into the physical world. This is the way Gandalf was able to say, you shall not pass and strike it down and the bridge broke and the demon fell. 
This is the same way that Makshoni, during the passage of the Red Sea, that young man took the collective awareness. I, I, I told you the story before, I'll re recap it very quickly for those of you who don't remember. But uh, when the Bible talks about the story of the passage of the Red Sea, they keep saying Moses, God told Moses to extend his staff, the, split, the, the water split, the Jews passed across and Pharaoh followed and the water fell. This is not what happened according to the Kabbalah. The Kabbalah said something completely different. When, God, when Moses asked God what to do, God said, jump in the water. When he told the Israelites what God said, they wanted to lynch him. We were a slave in Egypt, they said to him, but at least we were alive. Now Pharaoh's going to kill us. And, and he said, you don't understand. God is telling us we already know how to create the miracle. And during that night, he helped them achieve that awareness of the morphogenic presence that they need to surrender their fear, the greatest fear, which is to Pharaoh is going to kill me that I was talking about, whatever that fear is, that attachment that you have to Pharaoh and what he's gonna do to you, whatever the greatest fear, the boogeyman, whatever that attachment is, let it go, surrender it. And they didn't know how the miracle was gonna happen. All they know is that they have to let it go. And when they finally let it go and surrendered all of it, and gave it to the morphogenic awareness, God, the emptiness, the luminosity, whatever you want to call it, Yahweh, Elohim, it, uh, Sabbat Kadash, what, however you want to call it, it doesn't matter. When they gave themselves completely into this, in the morning, they were all entranced in the bleed through. They knew that the morphogenic awareness had, had already created the miracle. It was already done. They didn't know how it was gonna happen, but the miracle was already done. And all they had to do is to find one avatar and one person to initiate it. And in this instance, it's a young man named Makshoni. In the morning, as the water was lapping the, the, the beach, he began, got up and he began to walk into the sea and the water in his knee. And he was in that entrancement knowing, and all he was thinking and all they were all thinking, one simple command, and the command has to be very simple. Big picture, not the detail on how it's supposed to happen, teleport us to somewhere else, you know, create a wormhole, create a, a magical bridge, make the water freeze so that we can walk across it. None of that. You don't know what's gonna happen. It's none of your business. All you're asking for is a simple command. In their instance, give us safe passage. Give us safe passage. And the bleed through occur the moment the water was all the way in his mouth. As he was walking, water, 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 water got in his mouth, the water separated. And he walked right through. And all the other Israelites followed him. When they got on the other side, Pharaoh followed them and the water engulfed them. Now, what was interesting is more fascinating than anything else. And I've talked about this before. The bleed through was so powerful because water does not behave in this manner. This is an, a, an anomaly in all natural law. One of the Kabbalists that I was studying with, a, 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 a Rabbi, um, Rabbi um, Berg, described this in one of his books, The Power of Kabbalah. He says, at that very moment, Every body of water on earth split in half. Which means that for a moment, the consciousness of the morphogenic field rearranged natural law. It suspended it.
This is how powerful this is. But in your dream, by the time you're, you're writing these dreams, you have several dreams during the night, you're writing them and you're, it's a very specific sensation that you're walking through your daily life, you're going to work, you're doing your cooking, you're cleaning your house, you're doing, you're talking to your family, and then the dream, the presence, and the feeling in the dream, all like a bubble, that you're still in it. This is the way you take a command from somewhere else and you anchor it because of your presence in those two, in those different worlds, you bring it and you anchor it into this reality. In the Kabbalah, it's called the measure of God when you strike it down. It's called the measure of God. When you bring it into bleeding and becoming and making it a decree and a law and you strike it down, it becomes a law in this universe. Stop making yourself small. Stop being a victim. And stop whining about every little thing that are happening in your life. You are way bigger than that. Your true identity is the entire cosmic awareness, the entire morphogenic field, the entire presence that's guiding a flock of three million stalling into one completely beautiful, extraordinary pattern. This is who you are. A being that can suspend natural law. You need, I need, we all need to become that identity. We can spread goodness in the world. We can do all kinds of things and change all kinds of things. Now you're not, and again, you cannot bring into that field something that's going to interfere with other people's karma. You cannot bring negative intention. You cannot, you can't because the field is self-regulated and allow only righteous thing to manifest. Because the moment you begin to act, because if you're trying to create a personal agenda that's connected to the ego, it will snap you out of the collective awareness. It will drop you down. So if you're trying to bring an agenda that's dark or that's personal, blah, 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 it, you, you will not be able to touch that point. That point will seem like I'm talking rubbish to you. If you cannot get to it, it's because you're too trapped in your ego and you, 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 you you're not surrendering in the, the, the collective awareness and the plurality. You're too connected to your own ego. Because what I'm telling you is so simple. When you begin to do it, it feels like you're blanking your eyelid. And there is no effort in your part. Because you're not doing this for your ego. You're not pushing energy. You're not getting exhausted because you did this. In fact, if anything, when the morphogenic, they feel allow something to manifest for you, you become energized and healed and repair. It feels like literally you blink your eyelid. It is so simple that it is almost stupid. The control in dreams is the key. It's one of the major key. In fact, the second Buddha wrote a book 
the practice of natural life. Dream yoga and the practice of natural light. This is a dream that was written on the principle that he, he didn't write it, but he, one of his followers wrote this book. And this is one of the book I'm using in the class I'm going to be teaching. I'm teaching a dream class on dreaming on the Kabbalistic tree of life. Uh, and, and this is one of the textbooks I'm going to use. The practice of natural light is to learn how to create presence and awareness in dreams. I'm gonna use some of the books as well, but this is one of the books. And, 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 and the, 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 that, that kind of awareness allows you again to learn how to connect to the bleed through. Because at first it will be that the emotion of the dream begins to bleed into the daily life and you're going to be almost like in it. After a while, when you begin to control your dream, because after a while, when you, once you get aware of the dream and you do this for months and maybe a, a year or two, you begin to now commend the dream and control it. And when you begin to exercise that kind of mastery, you can select which world you travel to on the assembly point, and you can begin to select which emotion or which outcome that you want to create. Because in that assembly point, every miracle that can happen in the universe when natural law or suspended exists in this. This is a command center and a gyroscope. And when that upper heart is functioning correctly, all kind of miracle can happen. And again, the miracle cannot be egocentric. It cannot come because you want, you know, to have a million dollar for your whatever, or you want this, that, or the other to happen for your glory. You want everybody to adore you, the self-aggrandizement kind of thing. Because the one thing you realize when you're connecting to that, to that energy and you're making this command is that you are not in control of the power. What you are is a vessel through which that power grounds. Although Gandalf said you shall not pass, Gandalf did not generate the power. Although Makshoni and, 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 and the two million Jews uh, uh, on the edge of the uh, uh, Red Sea were wishing and were decreeing, give us safe passage, none of them were controlling the power. The power did not come from them. That's one of the things. This is why in the Bible it said, Thy will be done. They did not control it. And because they didn't control it, they allow it to move through. And that's the thing that you realize is that you're just allowing that, that bleed through and that morphogenic awareness, the outcome that you desire. Let's say, for example, you're praying for somebody. And then you're in that awareness and you're connected to the morphogenic field and you feel completely at peace. And you're trying to help bring that peace to them. You say, be gone, be gone, time and space. And then you project that antakarana, that column of chakras all the way back to God. You project it outside and you think of where the person is and you put it around them and then you may wish a desire. This is the thing I say to all the time when I'm praying for somebody. May the peace, the serenity and the love that I know pass on to you. And when I say pass on to you, I see that feeling bleeding from me into them. It bleeds from me into them. That's what I mean about pass on to you. It's a minor nuance, but it's an important, important distinction. May the peace, the serenity that I know pass on to you. And when it pass on to me, it's the belief true, the feeling of something happening in a different world now grounding into the physical reality.
please tell me if you're getting this because this is key. This is really, really key. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Yes, Pierre, and it makes a lot of sense. Very timely information for a lot of us. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. And I, and I want to add here that everyone is being tested, including me. I, I have a lot of friends who are in this who are doing in the circle who are doing spiritual work. They are all being major tested. And it's for us to learn that what is equal to the Jews, having Pharaoh behind them, coming for them, each one of us in our own way are facing right now. And we have to find a way to disconnect and transcend and let go of the boogeyman or the Pharaoh you know, our own version of the favor right now and disconnect to all of that by letting go of the fear that is creating of us and the attachment that we have to the fear of what we need to do or not do and all the things that, you know, all the details, the monkey my I have a, I have, let go of all of it at least for the moment, let go. And if you do this, you're gonna surrender your ego and your fear, your attachment and your control into the morphogenic awareness. The presence, the collective presence, which is the presence of God, of the entire morphogenic field that controls all multiverses. Think about what I'm saying for a moment. One presence, one morphogenic awareness that's controlling not just this universe, multiverses. You think little natural law that exists on Earth, this being could not bypass them? And then what is the outcome? What would you like to happen? What is the command? What is the wish? And it has to be big picture. Not that I want a Mercedes with, with stripes and you know the, the, the BS of the world. And if you can surrender and let that peace come into your consciousness and you let it go, at some point, a miracle will come toward you. When the miracle is coming and it shows up for you, you have to walk into it with certainty like Makshoni. This is the problem. And a lot of times God send the miracle and we don't walk into it. It could be somebody asking you, offering to help you with that or the other. And then and instead of being proud and saying, I don't need your help. I can do everything by myself. If somebody is offering you after you made that kind of request, say yes. This is God sending an angel to help you. Say yes. Yield to it. Like Makshoni, when you walk in the water, do not, and you cannot be in fear because we're all suspicious when we are going to challenges. We think everybody's in the enemy. 
But when you're in that state of miracle and you're in that, in that complete state, you have to trust and believe. And at that moment, when the miracle is touching the ground, because he, he, if Makshoni did not go in the water physically, the water would have never separated. They would still be sitting on the edge of the Red Sea, believing in the miracle and, and, and not actually walking into it. You have, you have to make it. This is why God said to, to Moses the day before, jump in the water. This is the way the miracle was going to happen. So when the possibility of a denouement, of something unraveling for you, presents itself, and when it comes from the most impossible and miraculous way, say yes, move into it. Because what you've done so far has not been helpful. And if you're walking with God, and in that certainty, no darkness, no enemy, no nothing can touch you. Everybody that I know right now in my circle that are spiritual or being challenged by big, big things. And the big things is their greatest fear. I am giving you a map, a blueprint to help create the miracle for you. And if it hasn't happened to you, it will. Because that's the point of us growing and evolving. Because if you did not face your fears like that, if you did not, if, if it didn't show up for you in that manner, you would not know how to flex the muscle to expand you into this cosmic awareness, into this cosmic presence. The, the challenge is a way for you to trigger it. Again, the challenges are gonna be custom made for your very specific life and circumstance. Any questions, any comments? Again, prayers, the way to increase presence, meaning practice to maintain, to become conscious in all forms of consciousness, singularity to plurality, collective awareness, doesn't matter, you're still you, are still you. okay? So the prayers, meditation, Contemplation, 
mantras, dream work. Now, part of the dream work that's even deeper is that, and this is the reason why I'm, I'm gonna be teaching a class down in November 1st, which is next, um, next Monday, not this Monday, but following Monday. And it's gonna be a 10 months class. It's dreaming on the Kabbalistic tree of life. And each month, it's going to be a Sephirot. First month, it's Kether. And we'll spend the whole month exploring Kether and the world of Kether, the special meditation with a key that will open the gate and the doorway to the realm and consciousness of Kether. And then the next Sephirot, Dan Hakma, Bina, etc., etc. And every month, you're going to get a profound bleed through an impact of the angels, the, the beings, the, the, the consciousness that exists in that world. And for a month, you're gonna get the bleed through so that you can become familiar and you can establish presence in that realm. I've never, I've always desired to teach it this way. I've never had uh, students who are interested in going that deep. And the reason I'm doing it this way, aside from the fact that at some point in the dream, you're gonna become lucid. In the exploration, you're gonna become lucid in the dream. But more importantly, aside from becoming lucid, you're gonna also begin to fall asleep Become, be awake while you're still falling asleep. So you're going to end up having beginning, you're going to begin to practice conscious immortality. You're going to change awareness from being conscious aware, consciously aware to being asleep, and you're going to be aware, conscious all the way through. The other benefit, since I'm doing it with a group and we're doing dream interpretation together, we're all going to be doing it together. What's going to happen? is that we're gonna start syncing with each other and walking in lockstep. Meaning what? We're gonna start dreaming together. People will have similar dreams. Or well, one person will begin, I had a dream last uh, two, four nights ago, but that, that, and the other person will say, me too. And, and the next thing you know, that will start first. And then the next thing you know, it's gonna be, but you're in my dream. And the other person said, yeah, I saw you too. And basically the same way, the assemblage point is an agreement, collective agreement that humanity is making to all be focused on the same assemblage point. When we work in that kind of intimate group, we're gonna make agreements during dream time to go to the same dream together. Why are we doing this? Because when the uh, uh, Three, uh, uh, when the passage for the new earth will occur during the, uh, the three days of darkness. That's the kind of collective sinking that the 144,000 have to be in to allow the bleed through and collectively ask the morphogenic field for safe passage into the new earth. This is the real work. Nothing is more real than this. I hope you're getting my, you're getting my point. Now the phenomenon of people dreaming together is a phenomenon called dream echo. Um, this is something in my past that I've done several times. Uh, um, and all of us can do it. It's not, it's not like because I'm special. It's like I, I paid a little more attention to these things than others. And the point of teaching the class for that length of time, we, we're studying 
next month, early part of November, we're not gonna end until the end of August of next year. And doing it this way, every Sephiroth, you're gonna enter the realm with this key, the symbol, and you're gonna, you're gonna explore what that realm is like. And the realm will bleed into your daily life to create an imprint for you to, be, to become aware of what that realm is like. And after that, we can go into the world like Gandalf and begin to create the miracles. We will be the true council members from the Council of Twelve. Because one of the things that happened during that training is that emotionally, in whatever way you're out of balance with that Sephiroth, it will demonstrate it to you. It's not gonna be a bed of roses. Some of the dreams are gonna be extremely confrontational. Some of it is gonna feel uncomfortable because we're not in balance with the energy. It will, it will show us what, what is out of balance and what needs to be done to correct it. This is, I, I've taught the class before, but I've taught it where it's 10 weeks. It's one week per second. It's not enough. This is just an intro. So doing it this way allow for a complete, uh, true um, harmonization of your consciousness to those realms and to allow the emotional and, uh, and more importantly, the lumin luminous, the light related, the luminous presence of that realm to be added to you. Any questions, any comments you may have? All right, let us, let us take a five minute break. And in the back end of this, I'll do a closing meditation, five minutes.
before I start with the meditation, I want to remind you, I'm going to guide you into created, creating a miracle for something in your life. But the key to it initially is to surrender your version of Pharaoh behind the, similar to Pharaoh in the, uh, standing behind the, the children of Israel, ready to slaughter them. What is your boogeyman right now? What is your greatest enemy or greatest struggle that you're dealing with? Now you need to let go of all that fear, of all that power and energy that you're investing in trying to defend yourself from this, battling this, getting connected and attached to it. I'm gonna guide you into doing this. You need to let go of all of it. And what's the worst thing that could happen in your head? What's the worst scenario? Whatever that worst scenario is, give it to God. Give it completely to God. And then when you're in that space where you have surrendered all of it to the blessed field, then I'm gonna guide you into creating the miracle with a very specific command. And it needs to be a simple sentence that will be a decree of what it is you will like to happen. Top level, not stupid details about, you know, I remember trying to counsel uh, this one uh, student, uh, client of mine years ago. I want to have a rich husband that's very handsome, that has this, that, and all these details, all this stuff. And I remember telling her, and, and, and you know, it was all material stuff. And I remember, how about intimacy? Do, do you want somebody that, that you can actually be vulnerable in front of? To my mind, that would be the first thing I would ask. A companion that I can, I can truly be me and that could understand the me. Not all the other stuff that you're asking. So I'm saying big picture. All right. Let us get started. Take a very deep and slow breath. As you inhale and exhale deeply and slowly, allow the universal life force that permeates everything to enter into your lungs. Keep breathing deeply and slowly. And let your soul and your awareness drop in the middle of your chest. Please forgive me. I love you. And I let go. Please forgive me. I love you. And I let go. Please 
Deus por amanhã. I love you. And I will go. Let your mind and your heart sync with each other. It is as if uh, your entire self awareness is being generated from your heart space. Like your eyes existed in your heart. that you can perceive energies 360 degrees. what you noticed. Take a very deep and slow breath and become aware of your greatest fear and challenge. is the worst that could happen to you as it relates to this issue. Keep breathing deeply and slowly 
and surrender all of it into source. Take a deep breath and move that energy outside of your body with the breath rising upward from the bottom of your feet and release it outside of your head and into source and unburden yourself and give it to the blessed field. Let go. Take another breath from the top of your head and allow the miraculous instantaneous repairs the scalar invert the vibrational opposite of this situation to drop into inhale deeply and let it cascade from souls and drop into the top of your head, washing through your entire being and ground into the core of the earth. Another deep breath. And move any residual presence of that fear that may exist in your body. And release it outside of time and space. And into source. go. Surrender it completely, exhale, and throw it into the pool of light. Let go. Detach from it. Let the scalar invert the vibrational opposite frequency to come to you. Inhale deeply and let it ground through your top of your head, move through your body and drop into the core of the earth. Take another breath from the core of the earth. Let this breath move through the bottom of your feet and dislodge all sub and related programs, fears that may exist in any recess of your subconscious mind. And let them all move outside of your body and to the top of your head and release them all into source. Surrender all of it. Let go. Into infinity times infinity. And let the cosmic morphogenic field cancel this vibration. And give you the solution set, the healing, and the repair. That you need. D 
be gone time and space. I surrender all my attachment to this. In infinity times infinity. I am free, liberated. And from the deepest recess of my consciousness and being, I now call upon a miraculous, instantaneous repair. to be decreed and manifest in my life.
Thank you for the blessing. I accept the gifts and I receive with gratitude. Thank you for the blessing. I accept the gifts and I receive with gratitude. Thank you for the blessing. I accept the gifts and I receive with gratitude. Take a very deep and slow breath. And whenever you feel ready, you can open your eyes.
Thank you, Pierre. That was perfect. Just the right timing. Oh, you're welcome. Yay. <laughs> that's, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Anybody else? Thank you, Pierre. You're welcome, you're welcome. I just wanna to say to all of you also thank you because you teach what you wanna learn. And today I've learned plenty. Mm. Because my spirit was talking to me, to you, and I've learned plenty. I want to thank all of you all watching us on Patreon and also on YouTube. Please subscribe to the channel, um, click the notification bell, and like this video to increase the algorithm. I will talk to you next week and continue to go higher and higher. Go out there and create miracles. Love you all. Talk to you next thank week. You. Have a good night, everyone. Bye-bye.